everyone, it's Leela from Miss Kiss Creations. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a little different. I am going to be doing an unboxing on my new Epson Workforce 7710. In this video, I'm going to open the printer right out of the box. You can see it's a brand new, and I'm going to explain the reasons why I chose this uh, printer and what I'll be using it for. Okay, so first uh, thing is I purchased this uh, printer on eBay. I don't know why, but there's a lot of printers that are out of stock. I searched this printer at Walmart, at Best Buy, uh, Amazon, and the best price that I could uh, find it was at eBay. So I'll post a link in my description below for uh, where you can purchase yours. So I purchased a new printer for sublimation. So I'm going to be uh, converting this printer uh, to a sublimation printer and I will be sublimating t-shirts, face masks, and uh, along with tumblers. Shortly after this video is posted, I'm going to be making a new video on how you convert your printer into a sublimation printer. I'm gonna go over it with y'all and also what printers are compatible to convert the printer into a sublimation printer. All right, let's go ahead and get started and open it up this new printer. Okay, so I found a spot for the printer um, on my desk, and now we're going to read the instructions, and we're going to power this on step by step, and hopefully seeing this rather than reading it might make it uh, easier for you to understand and, and how to power it on. You're first going to unpack your printer like you saw in the video, and then you're going to remove any of the tape around the printer. So you saw that blue tape, and you also... Uh, where the paper, where the paper feed is, you're going to see two yellow plastic pieces. You're going to take those off and you're going to remove them and throw them away. Same with any styrofoam or anything. Make sure you check behind the printer. Basically anything that comes off or pulls out of the printer and it looks like I missed some tape down here. Uh, you need to remove the tape because they tape it down for shipping. So finish removing that tape and then we'll go ahead and power on this printer. To power on, you're going to open the power cord and then you're going to plug it in. The plug is on the back. You can see it here and just go ahead and uh, plug it into your outlet. After you plug it in, you're going to push power and it should come right on like so. You're then going to select your language, your country, and your time. And then you can do the date format, whichever um, month, date, and year. Uh, and then you can set all that. I'm just going to just keep skipping through just to go fast. So I'm not going to set the time or the date just to get the video going. And then it's going to be preparing and you're just going to let it do its thing. And then uh, after this is finished, uh, I'll turn on the camera again. Okay, so you should uh, receive a screen like so. It says install the ink cartridges that came with this printer, close the scanner unit, and installation begins. So you can actually hear the printer uh, doing its thing in there. So after you've set up everything, you're going to now install the ink cartridges. Even if you are going to be converting this printer to a sublimation printer, you still want to do this step. So make sure you still have these ink cartridges available. You should have your four colors. You should have the scion, the black, the yellow, and the magenta. Um, I always like to keep the ink uh, right side up as much as I can. You're going to give it a good shake each one, and then you're gonna remove the plastic. And then uh, we're gonna lift the lid and then install them inside. And I'll move the camera to show y'all inside the printer. So to open up your printer, there's going to be a little lift spot right here and you're going to open. You're going to see where it says Epson and you're gonna see where the ink goes. I have all of my inks unwrapped. I'm going to gently push down, I'm sorry, pull up on this arrow. And then you're going to see where the colors are placed. You're going to see a yellow tab on these ink cartridges, you're going to pull off only that yellow tab whenever you've unwrapped them. So I'm going to start from the black and work my way over uh, to the right. So you're just gonna remove that yellow tab from each one 
and you're going to click, you could see there, there's like a little um, micro trip there and you're going to press that down in that column where that ink belongs and you're gonna hear that click. I don't know if y'all heard that click, but I did. So it's uh, nice and snug there. So again, that tab, just remove that tab there and then uh, the sensors and then you're gonna hear that click. So you have all four of these and I just did it backwards and you'll know if you did it backwards cause like I just, I felt that it was backwards. So, and then now for my yellow and they're all snug in there. And then we're going to shut the lid, shut this lid first and then shut this lid. Once your inks are installed, your printer's gonna uh, finish setting up. So like it says on the screen, it's gonna take about six minutes. It probably uh, might take about five to 10 minutes. So I'm gonna let it do its thing and then we'll go ahead and move on to the paper. The setup took about five minutes and now we're going to add the paper. You're going to open up the paper tray and you see this plastic piece here. You can just go ahead and remove that. Let me back up the camera. And then you're going to take your paper and it's cool because I really like how big the size is. It goes to 13 and 19. So you can make it whichever paper size that you have. So I just have the regular uh, printer paper. So I'm going to put it inside its tray and then size it up. And then you can put the plastic piece back on. It has a little uh, spot to put it on and then go ahead and then push your tray back into the printer. You're going to select your size and type. So it's going to be eight and a half by, uh, by 11, plain paper. So you can search in here. And if you have color paper, letterhead, whatever you are putting in your printer, go ahead and choose. If you're just using regular paper or printer paper, like I am, I'm sorry, um, plain paper, letter paper, it already is pre-filled for you. Click OK to start fax setting wizard. Um, connect the phone line. I'm not using fax, so um, I click cancel. Fax is not set up yet. Remind you later, no. And then now you're going to be at your home screen. Now you have your printer all set up. The next step that you're going to need to do is actually connect it to your desktop, laptop, computer. So um, you have two options. You can either go to the internet or you can install the disc that comes with your printer. My laptop does not have a disc. So um, I'm actually just going to go to the website. There's a US and a Canada one. This should be step six on your instructions. So uh, step six, install software. Do not hook up your uh, computer or your laptop with a cord. So if you think that you're just going to connect this with a cord, it's not going to work. So make sure you have to install the software to your computer and then start using your printer. So I'm on my laptop and I have the Workforce 7710. So I went to the website right here for US and then it's going to show uh, this. So you're going to follow the instructions on the computer screen to run the setup program. I scroll down on this main page and then it looks like it already detected my program, which is Windows 10 64 bit. And then I'm going to click download and it should take a minute to download and then we'll move on from there. So I clicked open file, um, verified publisher. So you're going to click no, or I'm sorry, you're going to click yes. Do you want to allow the app to make changes to your devices? It contains an installer, click OK. So now it's going to finish the download. And you'll see the Epson um, software or app pop up on your screen and give it a moment. You're gonna click accept. This, these are the legal terms. You can go ahead and scroll through these if you want to read these and then click accept. And then select the items you want to install. So you want to install the drivers, everything is clicked. You have the user guide on here and then you have the customer research participation software. So I want to install all of this. So I'm gonna click install. And now it's going to be connected to the internet. Uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but just in case you didn't, you have to have access to the internet to install your software. So now you're going to see your printer set up. And for me, I am going to use the direct USB connection. You can choose from wireless, the wired network, or the direct USB connection, whichever one you choose. So again, I'm gonna choose the middle one. I'm gonna click next and make sure you read every detail. If you are doing the direct USB connection, 
Um, the, the printer cord is not included. So it has a USB and then it has, uh, I call it the printer side on the other side. I'll uh, put a link in my description below. And then it says, don't connect the cable until prompted. So make sure you don't just plug it in immediately. So I'm gonna select it, click next. Attention, wait for the printer to finish charging uh, the ink. And it is finished, so next again. And then plug a USB cable into your computer and Epson printer. So I'm going to plug it in. And then once it detects it, then I'm going to assume it's going to have a check mark. And then the next button is going to be blue for me to continue. It's prompted me now to do the test page. So I'm going to move my laptop and then I'm going to print out a test page. Okay, so as you saw there, I printed my test page and it says, congratulations, you have successfully installed your new Epson printer. And now you can click next and then everything should be set up from there. Printed out the test page, so that's very, very good because now I know that the ink in the printer actually works. I'm going to print a couple more pages, uh, stuff in color and stuff in black and white, just to make sure the printer works. Uh, I do this before I convert it to a sublimation printer because if I automatically convert it and not uh, go through the stock ink cartridges, then if something's wrong with a the printer, then you can't take it back and the warranty is, val is invalid. So you wanna make sure if there's anything wrong with your printer, you want to catch it before you convert it to the sublimation and you wanna catch it with the stock uh, cartridges in the printer. Now that the printer's set up, I just wanna go over some things and the reasons why I chose this uh, Epson uh, WF7710 printer. It is very, very similar to the Workforce 7720 printer. The only difference between the two is the fact that uh, this one, the 7710 does not have the extra tray and the 7720 has the extra tray. So when I mean the extra tray, I have one paper tray, which is here, and I keep my extra papers inside of a cabinet. So I don't need two paper trays. I'm not doing any business office work or anything. I'm just printing. So that's why I chose this one over the 7720. The reason why I chose uh, the workforce over the eco uh, tank is because the eco tank will only print up to eight by 11 and a half. So the eco print or the eco tank will only uh, print a just standard letter. The Epson workforces, they print up to 13 by 19. So you can see whenever I take this tray out, you can see how big of a paper this actually uh, feeds into. You don't need to keep this tray on here if you don't want to. Uh, it, it just protects it from the dust. But you can see how big of a paper size you can print. So this is why I chose this specific printer. I know the Sawgrass is a very, very good printer. That's also, that's actually a sublimation printer itself, but it's very, very costly. So I wanted to get something that was, uh, I was able to afford, uh, convert it myself and have a good product altogether. My Epson's actually doing a uh, update of the firmware right now. So after it's updating, it's going to be ready to go. Once it's ready to go, I'm then going to start uh, removing the ink and actually turning this uh, printer, converting it over to a sublimation printer. Again, my sublimation conversion video will be posted in this description below. So be sure to check out the description. And if you are happening to watch this video before I release the next video, go ahead and turn on that notification bell so you can get notified whenever I release that video. I hope this video helped you and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more Tumblr and craft videos, including how to sublimate everything I have in sight. I'll see y'all next time.